Uh, hello everyone this is uh, our chapter number three for the course of uh, organizational theory design and change uh, chapter is uh, organizing in a changing global environment uh, in the first lecture we discuss about the basics uh, related with the concepts of the organizational theory design and change uh, when we talking about uh, the uh, of this chapter so the basic uh, objectives of this chapter is uh, uh, I can highlight to you is the uh, 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 <clears throat> we can list the forces in organizations specific and general environment that give rise to opportunities and threats identify why uncertainty exists in the environment describe how and why an organization seeks to adapt uh, to and control these forces uh, to reduce uncertainty then we can talk about the understand about how resource dependence theory and transaction cost explain why organizations choose different kinds of uh, inter-organizational strategies uh, to manage uh, uh, their environments uh, to gain the resources needed to achieve their goals and create value for their stakeholders. So these are some of the basic objectives. And when we're talking about the uh, organizational environment, so environment is the is the set of pressures and forces surrounded an organization that have the potential to affect the way it operates uh, and its access to uh, scarce resources uh, in shorter definition we can say that the set of forces surrounded uh, surrounding an organization that have the potential to affect the way it operates and its access to the scale resources uh, in the global environment we talk about the the u.s companies have been heavily involved in international trade since the colonial uh, days uh, when they shift shipped their stock of tobacco sugar to the europe in return of manufacture uh, in, in return for manufactured products in the through uh, throughout the 20th century uh, the, the ibm procter and gamble and thousands campbells and thousands of other U.S. companies established overseas division to which they transferred their domestic skills uh, and competencies in, um, in order to produce goods and services valued by customers abroad. Uh, apart from this, we can talk about the, in the Pakistan. If you talk about the Pakistan, so the Pakistan is also after the independence until now, uh, Pakistani environment emerges and Pakistani companies are evolving and provide a better environment and they operate within their available resources. So there are there are companies, there are different uh, brands which are ultimately uh, prosperous in the Pakistani environment. Like we can say that Lipton and Tapal, these are the example related with when we said talking about the Tapal is a Pakistani brand and they are emerging and they are leading. Bizan is another brand of the product. So they are prosperous and they are leading towards the other aspects as well. When the next thing is uh, when we're talking about, so the next thing is the organizational demo, uh, domain basically and the particular range of goods and services that the organization produces and the customers and other stakeholder itself so in an organization which we, we we talk about to attempts to structure its transactions and with the environment to protect and enlarge its domain uh, so that it can increase its ability and to create value for customers you can say uh, we can talk about the shareholders we can talk about the employees and the other stakeholders, for example, let's suppose McDonald's uh, domain is a wide range of burgers 
the fries, coffees, and food drinks, and other kinds of fast food products that the company makes to satisfy the need uh, needs of its customers. McDonald's structures a uh, transaction with its environment uh, that is with suppliers, bankers, uh, customers, and other stakeholders to obtain that resources it needs to protect and enlarge its domain. Uh, one major way in which an organization can enlarge and protect its domain is to expand internationally. This is very important. Then global expansion allows an organization to seek uh, new opportunities uh, and take advantage uh, of its core competencies to create value for stakeholders. Before uh, discussing the specific ways in which organizations manage their environment to protect and enlarge their domain, we must understand in detail which forces in the environment affect organization, the concept of specific environment and general environment uh, provide a useful basis for analysis. So this is a complete explanation towards when we're talking about organizational domain. Next thing is when we uh, see the organizational environment, so here you can see the demographic and cultural forces, international forces, political forces, you can see it, the customers, distributors, government, organization, union, suppliers, competitors, environmental forces, economic forces, technological forces. Uh, these are the elements. So if we see, if we discuss it one by one. So first we talk about the specific environment. By specific environment consists of forces from outside stakeholder groups that directly affect an organization's ability to secure resources, customers, distributors, unions, competitors, suppliers, and the government uh, are all important outside stakeholders uh, that can influence and pressure organizations to act in certain ways. Uh, as, in, as, in the, as in the figure you are seeing it, Oh, uh, and then we 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 again talk about the fast food uh, makers like McDonald's competitors such as the Burger King, uh, Subway, and the the others are important force that affects the organization ability to attract resources, uh, customer revenue, competition makes uh, resources scarce and valuable because the, um, the greater and the competition for resources, the more difficult uh, we can, they are to obtain. Then uh, competitors can be domestic or international. Each type has a different uh, implications for a company's ability to obtain resources. Then we talk about overseas competitors have not been an important force in the fast food industry as they have been in the U.S. car industry. We can say that where they have the reduced the ability of car companies to attract resources. Then afterwards, we, we talk about the other thing is that there is a number of changes in the number and the types of the customers. If you see it in the demographics and cultural forces, so when we when we related the the change in the number and the types of customers and in customer taste are another force that affects an organization an organization must have a strategy uh, to uh, manage uh, we can say that to manage the um, important element in 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 respect to uh, its uh, relationship with customers and attract their support and the strategy must change over time as customer needs change. So these are the areas. Then we talk about a global supply change environment or management, which is known as the planning and controlling supply distribution activities, such as acquiring and storing. Uh, and then uh, raw materials and the, the semi-finished 
products, controlling work in process, inventory, and moving finished goods from point of uh, manufacture to point of sale as efficiently as possible. So in that case, an organization has to make uh, many choices concerning how to manage these activities in order to secure most effectively uh, with reference to the stable supply of inputs or dispose of its products in a timely manner. Uh, for instance, like we can say that should uh, we uh, relate it with the with the with reference to the McDonald's or other products, we can say that. Uh, moving further, if we can go on and I can explain it to you, other important thing that Nokia was another example in terms of when we're talking about a global environment. So Nokia cannot compete and Nokia ultimately cannot survive in the global market uh, in a global competition. So another thing is that when we're talking about the uh, example, another example is the, like, let's suppose we can say that American rice invades Japan. Uh, Japanese are mostly uh, in the Japanese rice market mostly we can talk about to similar to many other Japanese markets uh, was close to overseas competitors. So these are some of the things which, which we're talking about the organizational insight or when talking about the uh, the environmental factors. Uh, specific environment, when talking about a specific environment, the forces from outside stakeholder groups that directly affect an organization's ability to secure resources uh, outside stakeholders include customers, distributors, unions, competitors, suppliers, and the government. The organization must engage in transactions with all outside stakeholders to obtain resources to survive. And then we journal environment, the forces that shape the specific environment and affect the ability of all organization in a particular environment to obtain resources. And moving further is to we talk about the general environment is related with the uh, economic forces and technological forces. Economic forces are factors such as interest rates, uh, the state of the economy and the unemployment rate determine the level of demand for products and the price of inputs, technological forces, the development of new production techniques and new information processing equipment influence many aspects of organizations operations uh, political ethical and environmental forces influence government policies toward organization and their stakeholders demographic cultural and social forces with reference to the age education lifestyle norms values and customs of a, of a nation's people shape organizations customers managers and employees with reference to these things then very much important things in, in the explanation. Then uncertainty in the organizational environment is basically all environmental forces cause uncertainty for organizations. Greater uncertainty makes it more difficult for managers to control the flow of resources to protect and enlarge their domains. These are the other things which is related with the um, with the reference to the uncertainty in the we can we we can also explain it the technological forces technological forces such as the development of a new production techniques hai, and then new information processing equipment hai, influence many aspects of organizations operations the use of computerized manufacturing technology can increase productivity similarly investment in an advanced research and development activities influence how organizations interact with each other and how they design their structures. So these are the things which can be relate with the technological forces. We can also talk about the international transfer of technology has important implications for an organization's competitive advantage. Organization must be able uh, to learn about uh, and have access to technological developments abroad that might provide a low cost or uh, differentiation differentiation advantage we can say that um, other thing we can say that the demographic cultural element 
uh, we relate it first we go to further then we first I like I explain it to you the the demographic cultural and social forces such as the age education lifestyle norms values and customs of a nation's people shape organizations customers managers and employees and here in the case of Pakistan it demographics are changed now people the education is more a lifestyle is changed norms and values are almost uh, vary from one organization to another organization uh, generational differences we can say that generation x generation y uh, generation z are more aligned nowadays in pakistan and they are working in a different perspective with different requirement and with different needs they have a very important role in the organization success as well we can say that other than the uh, the thing is, is we uh, the environmental complexity and the three uh, factors uncertainty is the the thing is we 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 talk about the environmental uh, complexity environmental com complexity is basically a function of the strength uh number and interconnectedness of the specific and general forces that an organization has to manage the greater the the number and the greater the differences between them the more complex and uncertain is the environment and the more difficult to predict and control uh complexity is also increases if over time a company produces a wider variety of uh, product for different groups uh, of customers. For example, if a company like, again, we talk about McDonald's, suddenly decided to enter the insurance and banking businesses, it would need a mass massive infusion of information to reduce the uncertainty surrounding the new transactions, you can say that. Complexity uh, can also can increase greatly when a specific and general forces in the environment become interconnected interconnected uh, that is when forces begin to interact so their effects on the organization become unpredictable uh, the more interconnected the forces in an organization specific and general environments the more uncertainty the organization's force faces basically then uh, uh, we talk about the other element is the uh, environmental dynamism, the degree to which forces in the specific and general environments change over time, stable environment forces that affect the supply of resources are predictable. Then we talk about the other thing is relate with the uh, 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 unstable uh, dynamic environment when organization cannot predict how the changes in the environment will affect them. This is the another point. Uh, we, we talk about the environmental richness, the amount of resources available to support an organization's domain. Environments may be poor because the organization is located in a poor country or in a poor region of a country. So that might be an effect. That might be the element in that that directly or indirectly affect the environment uh, there is a high level of competition and organization are fighting over, over available resources you 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 talk about these things resource dependence theory is uh, before going to this i can also explain it to environments may be poor for two reasons when we talk about environments is poor so that one be that one is the uh, the greater the the problems organization faces in our in, in managing resource transactions organization have to battle uh, to you can say that in terms of uh, for the survival you can say that to attract customers or to obtain the best inputs or the latest technology these uh, battles result in uncertainty for an organization. You you must say it. I I I, I explain it. Then in an environment that is poor is is basically unstable and complex. Resources are especially you can you can say that uh, 
are especially hard to obtain and organization face the greatest uncertainty in, in, in other terms, you can say that. Then mm, the other part is when we're talking about, so I can give you a minor assignment that you study about the Amazon.com. Just find out that how much the, the new information technology evolve and how this new in information technology can help the Amazon.com. This is your minor assignment and you have to submit it to me on uh, the LMS as well. I can also give you the assignment as well for this course. We, we, when we talk about resource dependence theory, so resource dependence theory is basically uh, are in before discussing this, we can talk about the organization is basically depend on their environment for the resources. They need to survive and grow the supply of resources, however, depends uh, on the complexity. Uh, you can say that dynamism and the richness uh, and the richness, we can talk about uh, the richness uh, of the environment. If an environment becomes poorer uh, because in important uh, customers are lost or new competitors enter the market, we can say that. Uh, resources become scarce and more uh, valuable uncertainty increases. Organization attempt to manage their transactions with the environment to ensure uh, access to the resources they depend on. They want their access to resources to be as predictable as possible because it simplifies uh, managing their domains and promote survivals. According to the resource dependence theory, the goal of an organization is to uh, minimize its dependence on other organizations for the supply of scarce resources and to find ways of influencing them to make resources available. Uh, this is in a, another important concept when we discuss this. Basically, we, we talk about here in a detail Basically, when we talk about the uh, this theory, so the, so the strength of one organization depends uh, on another for a particular resource. It's a function of two factors, you can say that. The one is, uh, is how vital the resource is to the organization's survival, scarce and valuable uh, inputs, such as component parts and raw materials and uh, resources such as customers and distributor distribution outlets are very important to an organization's survival. The other factor is the ex extent uh, to which other organizations control the resources. So this is the basic case. When you're talking about the PC makers industry, uh, the PC makers such as HP, Acer, Lenovo, and Dell, depends on organizations such as Samsung, NVIDIA, and Intel, which supply, <coughs> sorry, which supply memory chips and microprocessors. Uh, they also depend on change of uh, electronics retailers such as Best, Way, Best Buy, and online companies such as Amazon.com that stock their products and on school systems and corporate customers that they buy large quantities of their PCs. So these are the cases which is basically related with the resource dependence theories and the uh, uh, which relates to the resource. Now, I can also give you another task that you have to find out the China's air, air system. How the China's uh, uh, air systems work basically so i give you a, a minor glance at it there's a china's air travel system has gone through extensive restructuring and growth from one state owned airline before the start of economic reforms in 1978 china now has a large international carrier and several regional carriers uh, some of which have received attention and investment from the world's major airlines. China Eastern uh, Airline 
is based in Shanghai and is thought to be a key player in airline business. China Chinese airlines are profitable and have done uh, well in spite of rising fuel cost and recent economic up uh, upheavals. With this growth, uh, however, comes numerous problems in trying to serve an increasingly international clientele that has uh, choices in air airlines. So, is this this is a just a minor example? Like you can also find out more on the China's air system. You can explore the two thousand eight Chinese air systems work and then you talk about then you can discuss the other part in the may 2008 so you will you can also give me the report at how you you find out these things then uh other thing is when we're talking about the resource dependence theory he already explained it to you these points are already discussed in my uh voice uh the other thing is the inter-organizational strategies for managing resource dependencies, the two basic types of interdependencies cause uncertainty. Symbiotic interdependencies, interdependence that exists between an organization and its suppliers and distributors, this is known as symbiotic. Competitive interdependencies is interdependencies that exist among organizations that compete for scarce inputs and outputs. Uh, if we if we talk about so generally that is suppliers so Intel and PC makers like HP and Dell have a symbiotic interdependency and competitive interdependency exists among organization that compete for scarce inputs and outputs so HP and Dell are in competition for customers for their laptops tablet computers and for inputs such as Intel's newest microchips. Uh, organizations can be can have the use various linkage mechanisms to control symbiotic and uh, competitive interdependencies. The use of these mechanisms, however, requires the actions and decisions of the linked organizations to be coordinated. This need for coordination reduces each organization's freedom to act uh, independently and often in, in its own best, uh, you can say that interest. Suppose that HP, uh, you can say that to protect its future supply of chips, signs a contract with Intel, agreeing to use only Intel chips, but then a new chip manufacturer comes along with the, with a less expensive chip. The contract with the Intel ob oblige HP to pay Intel's high prices even uh, you can say though doing so is not in the HP's best interest. So these are the points which is related with the we talking about when you're talking about when discussing the symbiotic and the competitive things. Other thing is when we is uh, uh, more explain to, to, uh, to you so in the symbiotic uh, elements, you, you're developing a good reputation. Uh, you can, you talk about that you, uh, in the informal, you talk about the reputation, you talk about the co-optation, strategic alliance, mergers and takeovers. These are the points when you're talking about the in symbiotic interdependencies. This, this can develop a good reputation for the organizations, we can say that. Uh, in one of the major things when we discuss it is the uh, is the is the point is the reputation is the first thing and the other important thing is the co-optation co-optation is a strategy that manages uh, the symbiotic interdependencies by neutralizing problematic forces in the specific environment uh in this in this case i can more in, explain it to you an organization is basically that wants to bring opponents over to its sides uh give them a stake in or a claim on what it does not tries to satisfy their interest 
pharmaceutical companies co-opt physicians uh, by sponsoring medical uh, conferences, giving away free samples of drugs, and advertising extensively in medical journals. Physicians become sympathetic to the interest of the pharmaceutical companies which uh, have bring them on to the team and tell them that they and the companies have interest in common. So co-optation is an important political tool. You can say that this is a detailed explanation of co-optation. Other very, very common example of the co-optation is a way to co-opt problematic forces such as customers, uh, suppliers or other important outside stakeholders is to bring them with the organization and in effect make them inside stakeholders. If some stakeholder group does not like the way things are uh, being done, an organization co-opts the groups by giving its uh, it a role in changing the way things are. All kinds of organization use this strategy. Uh, for example, local schools uh, attempts to co-opt parents by inviting them to become members of the school board or by establishing teacher-parent committees. In such an exchange, the organization gives up some control but usually gains more than it loses. So this is another important example which, which we related. Interlocking directorate a linkage that results when a director from one company sits on the board of another company. So this is known as interlocking directorate. Other thing is the strategic alliances, an agreement that commits two or more companies to share their resources to develop giant business opportunities and increasingly common mechanism for managing symbiotic and competitive interdependencies. The more, uh, the more formal the alliance, the stronger and more prescribed the linkage and tighter control of giant activities, greater formality preferred with uncertainty. I think uh, for today, this is, uh, uh, this is enough. And if you have any questions on this whole uh, discussions, so you can please ask from me uh through my email id that is uh, z u double n double o r a i n k h a double n at the rate gmail.com so we can discuss it if you have any questions or if you have any group uh for this course so you can also discuss with me uh, through through the whatsapp uh so go through with it uh, also complete the assignment uh, which I given to you in my uh, discussions for this class. So go through the, my video, audio, and then you can uh, done with your assignment as well. Uh, so we, we can also explain it to you, this chapter, and this is a very important chapter as far as your examination is concerned. So go through it, and then we will discuss it in the details. Uh, thank you very much, and have a safe time to all of you. Uh, we will discuss it more in the uh, next class as well.